I know it's been a while, but I'm alive and in this video I want to show you how to make a DIY book lamp. You can use white paper for your book or you get a little bit more fancy using colored paper. You can make one for yourself or use my materials to teach this to a group of kids. As always, everything is done using simple electronics and conductive tape. No tools or special skills are required. As you see, the four LEDs are connected to two button cells each LED having a resistor to adjust the voltage over the LED. At the bottom, the circuit is opened and closed by a slide mechanism. I will show you later how this works. Besides my templates and some craft supplies, all you need is conductive tape, four LEDs, four 56 ohm resistors, two button cells and a binder clip. You will find all templates and a link list to all materials on my website. A link is in the video description. Let's start with the book's paper circuit. First, cut out the circuit template and glue it to a piece of cardboard. Do not put glue on the little triangle and the area around it, because you need to slip the binder clip underneath it later. Then cut out the book cover. Now mark the ends of the two dotted lines on the other side of the book cover. Then cut halfway through the cardboard and fold it. Now trace the circuit with conductive tape. At the corners, I just skip the corner and proceed with the next track. Afterwards, I press down the tape at the corner. Make sure to leave gaps where the components will go. Check out my basics video if you want to know more about working with conductive tape. Now bend away the longer leg of the LED and also the shorter one. But give the shorter one another bend like that. Then connect the LED to the circuit using conductive tape. Remember, long leg up, shorter leg down. In case you are uncertain which leg is which, you can check the LED's light body. It has a flat side where the shorter leg is. For the resistor, direction does not matter. Use a new strip of conductive tape for each leg of every component. Prepare strips up front to speed up this process. Once you have all components connected, press down firmly on every connection. Now insert a battery for testing and use a strip of conductive tape to bridge the gap in the circuit. All LEDs should light up. And now to the slide switch. The switch has a large conductive area inside that slides in and out of a sleeve which has two strips of conductive tape separated by a small gap. Bridging the gap lights up the LEDs. To make the switch, cut out the parts and stick conductive tape were shown in the template. For the sleeve, you will need to fold the tape over to the other side and continue it roughly to the middle. Make sure the two strips do not touch each other. The longer inner part just gets a few strips of tape that overlap each other. Now fold the pieces at the dotted lines. The short piece should have conductive tape inside with two short strips outside. The inner part has conductive tape at the outside. Now glue the inner part together with paper glue. Put it inside the short part and glue this part together with a strip of transparent tape. Now test your slide mechanism. Attach the sleeve to the main circuit so that the strips of conductive tape align. Now connect the strips on the sleeve to the main circuit. Double check your connections as it is easy to mess things up here. Test your slide switch. If everything works, use some transparent tape to better attach the sleeve to the main circuit. Now we need to adjust the slide switch so it turns the LEDs on and off. For a start, push the slide switch through until the LEDs switch off. Now add a strip of paper as a guide. Close the book while holding down the slide switch so it does not move. Now hold down the left end and open the book so that the slide switch slides out of the sleeve, turning the LEDs on. Adjust the position of the slide switch until the LEDs turn on as soon as the book is opened. This needs some trial and error. Attach the end of the slide switch with tape once you're happy. This is what the end result should look like. For the bellows, the most important part is to score all edges up front and fold everything strongly. Use a ruler and the back of a butter knife to score the edges. 
Use quite some force for proper scoring. Now fold all edges. Use the butter knife to strengthen the folds. Then undo everything and fold all edges to the other side. You really need to be precise when folding. Unfold again and check the middle of the paper. If the mountain folds indicated by a solid line are pointing up and the dotted valley folds are pointing down, you're ready to go. Now we use a binder clip to hold together one side of the bellows. Carefully pull the ends of the zigzag pattern apart until the paper folds down. In case the paper tears apart, use some transparent tape to fix it. Now comes the tricky part. At the zigzag, the mountain folds must turn into valleys and the valleys into mountains. To do this, fold the zigzag lines and gather all folds. If this is too difficult, you probably did not score the zigzag lines enough. The result will be that the bellows form a right angle. When finished, make sure to press down on all edges to strengthen the folds. Repeat the whole process on the other side, then make at least one more bellow. Now bad news. We need to unfold everything because we need to make the paper translucent by using some vegetable oil. Put oil everywhere and then wait for a few minutes and wipe dry. To refold the bellows, the printed side should be facing up. Push the middle together and help the valleys and mountains to take shape again. If you folded strongly before, this should be very easy now. Now let's glue the bellows together. Put glue on the inside of the part that goes on top. Use some extra glue since the paper is oiled now. Then put the pieces together and make sure everything is in place. Push all bellows together and firmly press. Unfold again to check if everything still unfolds. Let's glue the bellows to one side of the book. Insert the two button cells and test your book one last time. I realized that my book turned the lights on when closing it all the way. This is because the metal paper clip is bridging the two strips of conductive tape on the slide switch. You can attach transparent tape on top of it to insulate the area and remove the clip of the binder clip. Now glue the bellows to the other side of the book and you're finished. If you want, you can use colored paper or gift paper or even fabric to decorate your book. I can really recommend to use colored paper for the bellows instead of white paper. Use light colors because those will get more saturated when you apply oil and darker colors will block more light. And of course you can add more bellows to make a larger book lamp. So have fun creating your very own DIY book lamp. So that's it. Head over to my website to download my templates and materials list. I also offer workshop materials designed to teach this to kids. Be sure to check it out. You will find all links in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.